Should I start with uh, get this Will Osprey thing over with? Sure. It's not even really a thing. But last night on the show, they announced the Owen Hart brackets. So these are the brackets. Claudio versus Pac, which we already saw. Brian Danielson versus Shingo. Ray Phoenix versus Jay White. Jeff Jarrett versus Wildcard. Then for the women, we've got Willow versus Serena Deeb. Nyla Rose versus Chris Stadlander. Diana Parazzo versus Akaru Shida. And Mariah May versus Soraya. So we'll start with the women first because this seems easy. I would presume that it's going to be Willow and Chris Statlander. And then I would say Deanna and Mariah May. Hmm. And then probably Mariah May versus... Maybe Statlander. I'm not sure. But the point is, I believe that Mariah May obviously is winning this tournament. It is Mariah May and Tony Storm at Wembley. Right? Makes sense. Can we all agree? I agree with Any that. arguments there? No. Okay. Now we've got the men's side. we got to talk about this. Claudio versus Pac. Danielson versus Shingo. Ray Phoenix versus Jay White. And Jeff Jarrett versus Wild Card. Okay? So... I, you know, I thought that you know it's Brian Danielson's last year. We might get that Danielson Claudio match, but that ain't happening because uh, Claudio lost a pack. But regardless, doesn't matter. Then we got uh, the Ray Phoenix, Jay White, Jeff Jarrett in the wild card, and what we got to talk about here is uh, Will Osprey is not in the tournament now. I've heard, and this is why I bring it up, I've heard people going on and on. Why do we keep presuming or pushing or demanding or expecting that Will Ospreay is going to go for the world title at Wembley? You shouldn't do that, they say. Unnecessary. Well, first off, looking at this right here and looking at the booking of Dynamite last night, I believe that the top matches at Wembley are going to be Brian Danielson versus Swerve for the AEW title. And I believe that Will Ospreay will be facing MJF. So Brian Danielson wins the Owen Hart Cup and gets the shot. And then MJF faces Will Ospreay at Wembley. Now, the wild card is is interesting because the wild card could be Will Ospreay. It's possible. And then, you know, if that ends up being Will Ospreay, if he loses to Swerve, and then ends up the wild card, he could win the tournament, and he could go to the pay-per-view and, and win the title. I think it's obvious, painfully obvious, that Will Ospreay is not winning the world title at Forbidden Door. Because the simple fact of the matter is, if you are going to belt old Will Ospreay, why in God's name would you do it at Forbidden Door and not Wembley? He's either he's either winning it at Wembley or he ain't winning it this year, okay? That's like your two options, right? And so that brings us to the wild card also people have brought up. What about Hangman? Could the wild card be Hangman? And here's my thoughts on that. I think that would be a bad idea because if the Hangman returns... First off, the Hangman's return is going to be against Jeff Jarrett. And then your two options are Hangman makes his big return and loses in the Owen Hart Cup. Or Hangman wins the Owen Hart Cup and it's Hangman and Swerve at Wembley. People have been pushing it could be Hangman and Swerve at Wembley. Well, I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but every time they've wrestled, Swerve has beaten Hangman. Okay? It's like 3-0. to zero. So... Are we going to bring back Hangman to lose his fourth match to Swerve at Wembley? In the Owen? Because I can't imagine that you're bringing back Hangman to beat Swerve, heel Hangman beating Babyface Swerve in the main event of Wembley. Like, I I don't see any of this happening. So I, I again, think Brian Danielson and Swerve and, and MJF and Will Ospreay. Now, the big argument. Well, listen, guys. Why are you pushing so hard that Will Ospreay should should win? Why why can't we do a uh, and I've actually had people say this, which is hilarious. 
Because all I hear is people talking about don't book like WWE. Why don't you have it do it like Cody? Wait another year. Well, you certainly could. But here's the thing with waiting another year. Will Ospreay came in, and on day one, he was the most over guy on the show. And he is, on most weeks that he shows up, the most over guy on the show. MJF is back, so arguably he's he's the most. But, I mean, they'd be neck and neck at worst, you know, two most over guys on the show. So this is the question I have for everybody, which is going to sound like a burial of Tony Khan, but it's not meant to be. It's just a, it's just a mental exercise, okay? How many people can you name on the AW roster that are more over after being there a year than they were when they first came in. Shall we go down the list? How many people can you name, Mike, that from the day they debuted in AEW, they're more over now than they were when they first debuted? Jericho's not more over now than he was when he debuted. No. John Moxley, at best, is, uh, you know, as wow. over as he was when he debuted. Yeah. You could argue Swerve. Swerve, I would say, is more over than when he, yeah. he debuted. But I can't say he's more over as champion than, you know. True. Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy, I'll put it this way. Orange Cassidy is more over than when he debuted. But is he more over now than he was a year ago? No, he's not. Willow, maybe. Uh, Willow, you could give Willow. But you can't give Mercedes. No. You can't give anybody else in the on the women's roster at all. Like, every single woman on the roster was more over when they debuted than they are now. I guess maybe Tony. So my, my point is, if you go down the entire roster, everybody, okay, Adam Cole, you yes. know, Samoa Joe, you know, just the entire roster, okay? You can't say Jay White, good example. Is Jay White more over now than when he debuted? No. Is yeah. Danielson? No. You know, Claudio? No. Pac? No. I'm just looking down at who was on the show last night. So the, the point is, yes, it is possible... It is possible that Will Ospreay will be more over next year than he is now. But if you look at the entire AEW roster, the odds are strongly against him being more over a year from now than he is now. Furthermore, last year, Wembley drew 81,000 whatever, 81,000. Okay? This year, they're at 40. And tickets have been on sale for months. Okay. Maybe, maybe they'll draw 80 next year. But the odds are they ain't going to draw 40 next year. The odds are they'll probably be closer to 30 for year three. Okay. So you could, you could, you know, do the Will Ospreay Wembley title win this year in front of 40,000 people when he is currently arguably the hottest person on the roster, or you take a very big gamble, a very big gamble, and a year from now, presume you're going to sell more tickets at Wembley, he's going to be more over than he is now, and it's all going to be better. But if you look at everything that I've laid out, the odds are that's probably not going to happen. So if it were me, he would be winning the title at Wembley this year. I don't think they're going to do that. But, you know, all of these Cody arguments and everything like that, listen, when Cody lost, when Cody lost the first year at Mania, don't sit here and do revisionist history saying, we all thought it would be better to wait a year. Nobody thought that. Nobody. And, as a matter of fact, it was better with an extra year's build. It was better. Okay? But, I don't know, man. Odds are, to me, this one isn't going to be better with an extra year. But I guess we won't know until it happens. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.